Nelson. 18 minutes remaining. Ole Miss leading UCLA by a 3-2 count. David Sanders with the three, Matt Barnes, two free throws. We're just underway under 18 minutes to go in Pittsburgh, the final game of the night. A nice job by Derek Allen on Gazurik in the inside. Now Jason Harrison, Wade, back they come outside. Jason Harrison, five foot five inch senior. This is the first meeting ever between Ole Miss and UCLA. Eight and nine seeds, Emmanuel Wade for three, no, Gazurik cleans it. Good kick out. Billy Knight, Harrison's back, huge height advantage. And Billy Knight cans the jumper. And a good read, too, Vern. He took advantage, had the size on the little guy. Of course, you said 5'5", five, five, you're giving him some. Uh, he, his heart is about 6'6". Six, six. Harrison goes right. Ole Miss coming in as the nine seed, 20 wins for the season. They are 20 and 10. UCLA, a very erratic team, 19 and 11, but very enigmatic. Steve Lamon, the coach in his sixth year. Here's Gad Zurich. And another example of this huge height advantage enjoyed by UCLA. And a big concern for Ole Miss, nice denial on the wing by Sanders, is the length around the perimeter. So it's going to be very hard to make entry passes. Cincinnati earlier eased to a win over Boston University. They will meet the winner of UCLA or Ole Miss on Sunday afternoon. Straight up, man to man. I knew you'd get a chance to. Well, I figured we'd let everybody know. And this is what some, a lot of people will try on the feisty Jason Harrison to post up. Bozeman is, and they pop him out. Cedric Bozeman, freshman point guard. Barnes, what a tough shot that was. Wow, and really, Bozeman was trying to get reset down underneath. And, and Jason Harrison, in asking Rod Barnes, do a lot of teams try and post him up? They, he said they do, but he's so strong, he benches 300 pounds. I knew your eyes bright when you heard that. It's in your league. Uh, but a tough, feisty competitor, to that guy. Number 11. Richard Kirkland goes to the bench. Derek Allen, number 40. There's the alley-oop inside. It's taken away by Harrison. Three on two, left side. David Sanders, kick it back outside, go to the half court. Real solid trip. Don't waste it. From the corner, Justin Reed. That's just inside the arc for two. And Justin Reed with a great cut to the short corner. Took advantage of the back of the zone. UCLA ball. Aaron Harper thought that Knight might have touched it last. And Rod Barnes, the head coach at Ole Miss, going to the bench again. Emmanuel Wade back in. So also Richard Kirkland. And early on, UCLA has not done a good job on their entry pass, letting people get set up. That high-low from Barnes to got Zurich. I mean, balls over the head, everybody knows. Rod Barnes got this team into the Sweet 16 last year. Had a thrilling victory in the second round over Notre Dame, then they lost to Arizona in the first of the seat Sweet 16 games. Here, Bozeman with an air ball. Sanders, Emmanuel Wade, number 32. David Sanders, right side. Aaron Harper in the corner, Kirkland. Good ball movement oh, by Ole Miss. Isn't it terrific? What a nice shot by Reed screening off. Just come up empty at the rim. From the corner for three, <laughs> Billy Knight. And Bozeman gave it up nice and early. Solid contribution. And the puppy set by Knight. 7-5 UCLA. Here's that match for him. The foul line is empty. Now you've got to sprint in there, though. Knight goes for the steal. Can't get it into the corner again. Aaron Harper. If you force that Zurich to run corner back to the box, you're going to get whatever you want. He just doesn't cover. Now he's giving the open jump. He's not even bothered coming out. And Harper makes him pay. And they really, this is a terrific team understanding what to go at and when to take advantage. Ole Miss back on top. This is a team that lost in the first round of the SEC tournament last week to South Carolina. A two-point victory, but it's also a team that won a convincing win at home over Alabama, the second seed. They scored 80 on the Crimson Tide. Gad Zurich. Oh. Gad Zooks when he comes <laughs> attacking. Huh? He's uh, so aggressive around the rim, just has to develop a nicer touch on his release. Sanders. Wade. 
overload now. And they got to communicate and they've got to respond. And here's the short corner again. Got George does not want to come out. Or he does come this time. And it opens up the box then. Reed puts it on the floor. What a different player, huh, from a year ago. Widely regarded as the best recruit Ole Miss has had in years. And the key to their back-to-back uh, -back tournament uh, appearances now. Here's Capano. One of the great open shooters. Can't give him those looks. That was Sanders who denied him that one. There's the pass to Wade. Spots up for the three. Not there. And Emmanuel, one more pass. You had Sanders in the corner. Up and down. Ole Miss not afraid to take that open jumper. Ball taken away. Oh, not a good foul there. He got help in the back. That's a mistake compounded. And you only want that in the back. And Steve Lavin's going to make a move. He's going to bring Ryan Walton in. Time has been called. 10-9. CBA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Bacardi Silver. Blockbuster, Microsoft, and by Chevy Trucks. The confluence, of course, downtown Pittsburgh, the Allegheny, the Monongahela that formed the Ohio, and uh, we've got things going like this here too, Bill. I'm impressed with your geography yeah. uh, and those tips, and of course, both teams a little bit different style. Now, UCLA's coming out straight up man-to-man, -man. and of course, Miss Ole Miss, and they're not inbounds. They don't establish. Not a good play out of a timeout, but early in the year, UCLA man-to-man, -man, a little full-court pressure. They weren't sure of what they wanted to play. They've gone to the matchup at the end of the year, and right now they go switching on the timeout. Here's Walcott on for Bozeman at the point after Walcott had that foul. Knight for three off the rim, and it's taken down by Aaron Harper of Ole Miss. Puts it in the hands of the 5'5 senior Harrison. Playing in his final uh, appearance, final season for Ole Miss. Here's Harrison backing it out. And now Billy Knight out on him. And they're going to automatic switch. switching. They're right. switching on the exchange. Sanders, David Sanders, Harrison. A very deliberate Ole Miss team. That one's knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Justin Reed. Well, final games of the night in the first round on Friday night. And coming up, Siena against Maryland with a tip at 10-14. Murray State against Georgia. And in Dallas, Boston College takes on the Longhorns of Texas. And right now, if you're Ryan Walcott, you want to run the show, get them organized. The, the, the difficulty, I think, in watching tape is the point to distribution for UCLA. Getting them in the right sets, running the offense, and don't gamble with passes. Be solid. There's a pass deep in the corner for Capono with the fake and the shot, and he got all of the rim. And that's how Barnes bites him, and he really sees the floor, understands, does the little things. Great skip pass over the top. Jason Capono, the junior from Lakewood, California. And another lead change. This is the seventh lead change we've had in the early going. Back outside, quick pass, touch over to Aaron Harper, in and out. And that's off Billy Knight. It's going to be Ole Miss ball. And that's what makes Ole Miss tough. Sanders with the extra pass to give the open look to Harper. Both of them can knock shots down. Rico Hines, a fifth-year senior, on for the UCLA Bruins. And Richard Kirkland gets a rest for Ole Miss. Rico Hines was a starter in this, his final season at UCLA during a nine-game win streak earlier. He suffered a concussion, and Steve Lamont says they missed his experience on the floor. Now, over the years, uh, he's put somebody in the lineup, and all of a sudden they go on great runs, uh, consecutive wins, and right now the zone after the inbounds. This is Hines out on Harrison. Harrison for three. Not there. Barnes tipped. And out of uh, bounds, it'll be Ole Miss ball. 11-10 Bruins with 11.55 to go. First half. Greg Gumbel in New York. UCLA has a one-point lead on Ole Miss in Pittsburgh. We will keep tabs on that game for you, but right now, time for your game to begin at the MCI Center in Washington. The top seed in the East, the Maryland Terrapins, taking the court against Siena. Let's take you there and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. All right, thank you, Greg Gumbel. The final game of four here today. 
at the MCI Center. Yes, the Maryland Terrapins, the one in the East, about to take on the Saints of Siena with Wisconsin facing the winner of this game Sunday afternoon. And Billy Packer, we have seen the Siena Saints practice here and tell me about their team and their star player, Prosper Parangua. Jim, we're going to see a guy that uh, normally is the opposite of what you see in these kind of 116 matchups. Karangwa is actually 6'6". Sometimes you mentioned the best recruit. Well, he's worked at his game. He has this ability to smile, which his mother passed on to him, to diffuse situations. So during the course of uh, watching his different games, you know, he'll have a tough call against him. And he's as happy as a guy that had his check picked up. <laughs> he just laughs his way to the bank. That reminds me of dinner with you. <laughs> Very true. 11 10. Harrison, right side, Emmanuel Wade. Good perimeter passing, but I think they got to get touches or dribble in the low box area or penetration just to set up their outside shot. I just love watching Justin Harrison play. Well, you know what? You're probably the only the only guy that you can post up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, but I, I agree. He's got a heart. And look at how deep, nice stroke. That's a little too deep, I would think. Gadzurik with the rebound. That's three for Gadzurik in the game. Alley oop. Barnes, nice touch, but it's too hard and out of bounds. Walcott didn't need that, though. That's, he's got to read ahead. And a reminder that uh, first round games, the final games of the night, yet to tip off. Murray State against Georgia in the East, the tip time of 10:20, and Boston College against Texas. That's an 11 against a six at 10:21. We've got an eight versus a nine here in Pittsburgh. Neither of these teams came into the NCAA tournament with a surge of uh, of victories. Three and six, the last nine for Ole Miss, and uh, UCLA lost four of its last six. At that time, the flash and then the dribble penetration against the zone. Jump stop, Harrison kick in the corner. David Sanders tries the entry pass. Good defense. T.J. Cummings is on the floor, and there's another turnover. And great speed and coverage getting down the floor. Wade with great hustle. UCLA already turned it over five times. 11-10. From the corner, too strong. Sanders, offensive board, Harper. And we'll try it again. We'll take Jason Harris done a great job getting into the lane the last couple of trips. Here's a pass into it. Good defense by Barnes and a good call as well. They keep it. Clean block, hell ball, possession arrow, favors Ole Miss. Steve Lavin going to the bench again. D. John Thompson comes on. And Andre Patterson, a couple of the youngsters. Matt Barnes will sit. And they are talented youngsters, too. They, they, getting back to your favorite player out there, at least by your admission, Jason Harrison, Brad Barnes smiles. Does he remind you a little bit of yourself? And he starts to smile. A lot to prove when he was a player at Ole Miss and certainly an accomplished one by the end of his career. And certainly this guy with a career in Oxford. Harrison passes on the shot. Nine on the shot clock. In the corner again. Andre Patterson out defensively. They got to walk before, yeah. You can't get that running start anymore. Refs are too good spotting it. Greg Gumbel in New York, UCLA with a one-point lead on Ole Miss. We'll keep tabs on this game for you. Meanwhile, more basketball ahead. Some of you will be headed to the United Center in Chicago, where 14th seed Murray State meets number three Georgia in the East. Others we will send to Dallas for a first-round Midwest game between 11th seed Boston College and number six Texas. We will send you to your games right after this. It's amazing with Duke and North Carolina always until this year for Carolina, but producing teams that were like alternating the one seed in the East. Maryland had not been in the East in the NCAA tournament since the seeding process began. They last have been in the East 58 and 73. Well, they were a West Coast team primarily really? in the NCAA tournament. He's got ready to get on that plane and go as far away from Washington, D.C. or College Park, Maryland as you could go. Straight man to man by Maryland. Clinton with the three, and the Saints are on the board. And that was a good shot by Clinton. Baxter was on him. Let's see if they get the Lonnie Baxter. He's got Millie Miller guarding him on the inside. Baxter great at getting position down low. 
There it is, good low post position. He's got Miller riding him on the side, trying to side him. And I'd say Lonnie Baxter is good. Miller throws it away. To the man that will steal more balls than anybody in college basketball. Juan Dixon, the steal leader in the ACC, just has incredible anticipation. Lake Shadow and Karangwa everywhere. No help on the baseline side for Baxter. Clinton makes the move on Baxter. Great draws the foul. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA championship brings you to the United Center in Chicago. And it's been a toddling town today. Tonight, our finale the begins right here, Dallas, Texas. And tonight, Boston College, the 11th seed in the Midwest, takes on Texas, the sixth seed. And the winner will play Mississippi State Sunday right here in Big D. And our side, the dogs on the other. And in the case of Georgia, in college, two outstanding point guards, Bob. One is a freshman, one is a junior. T.J. Ford from Texas is a distributor and a guy who makes his teammates better. When he is at his best, he is penetrating and dishing, and he has the heart of a lion. If you play with him too far, however... ...along with his brother Jonas, uh, two really gifted twin brothers. Now on the other side, Devester Anderson, a longtime assistant with Hugh Durham at Georgia. In fact, he spent eight years there. He still carries a Georgia golf bag uh, that he plays with in the off season. He knows so much about this program. He told us yesterday, I'm very familiar with them. When I saw this 3-14 matchup, I felt pretty good about it. He knows their personnel very, very well, Tim. In addition, the system that Jim Herrick runs is the same system that he ran as when he was an assistant coach at, at Georgia. So he can defend the system very well. He likes his chances. Tivester took over for Mark Gottfried, who left for Alabama in the Southeastern Conference. Here are your starting lineups. Antoine Welchel, along with Victor, James Singleton, Burdan, and Kevin Pochel. Starting five for Murray State. Hayes Daniel. Steve Thomas was ill. In fact, got an IV overnight. They've supplanted him with as uh, many foods as possible. And Jim Herrick says he's ready to go. He's full tilt for this game. Ezra Williams and Rashad Wright, the rest of that starting five. 16 NCAA tournament appearances for the veteran coach. Our officials, referee is John Hughes, William Bush, and Brian Kersey. Expect this game to be up and down the floor. Tremendous athletes. Who will be quicker to the ball? This will be quick on quick, Tim. There's not a player out here who doesn't have jets and quickness. Daniels, the dump down for Thomas. Taken away by Singleton. Kevin Bushell, junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. Running the show at the point. Georgia in a sagging man-to-man. Man-to-man, but different than Southern, Southern Illinois' pressure man-to-man. -man. This is sagging back in, hoping to give out outside shots that are challenged with a hand up. We're dying with a shot clock winding down. Nothing but net. Justin Burdine out of Savannah, Tennessee. Ezra Williams, he and Hayes will take the majority of the shots, particularly early. This is a Georgia team that lacks some depth. Historic program in Athens, where you'll find a lot of pine trees. Tournament teams have done very well. Final four for Hugh Durham back in 83. That was the year after Dominique Wilkins left. Players like Vern Fleming on that club. Lost to NC State in Jimmy Valvano's miracle run. There's a tip in. Cuthbert Victor. Victor, the closest to it. The young man out of the Virgin Islands with the bucket. Five nothing racers. Pull up. And Jarvis Hayes gets his first basket. Jarvis Hayes. By the time this night's over, the country will know about Jarvis Hayes. 
Verdang in traffic. And again, very quick to get it to the baseline, and Rashad Wright picks up the foul. Murray State out of Kentucky. 19 and 12 overall. They got that big win against Tennessee Tech. You see, in the Ohio Valley Conference, they've had much success at Murray State through the years. This is a very proud basketball tradition. You remember the days of Popeye Jones? <laughs> Fly Williams. Oh, yeah. They've had their fair share through the years. And Sylvester Anderson waited 36 years in the business to get his first head coaching opportunity. Couldn't have come to a more deserving gentleman. This is the smallest team that Georgia will have played all year, Tim. They're used to playing much bigger teams in the Southeastern Conference. Austin, uh, Murray State's quickness could be a bother to them here. In traffic, Williams is fouled. That'll go against number Burdine. Number three fouls on number 24, Justin Burdine. First person. Well, Tevester Anderson, First known as one of the best recruiters in the Georgia business, has spanned the globe fouls. for the constant variety of players. <laughs> And the thrill of victory. Yeah, indeed. I met, Germany, I met, Trinidad, the Virgin Islands. I met Tevester Anderson in 1976 when he was a high school coach in Atlanta at West Fulton High School. And he had a 6'11 center named Ricky Brown who went to Mississippi State, yes. not North Carolina, I might add. He was a very effective player. In those days, played for Jim Hatfield, who's an assistant with Tevester. Another three. Justin Bergein feeling it early. And it's a six-point lead. Up top, Hayes off the front iron. Pulled down by Victor. Right now, Murray State has their nickname, mascot name would uh, suggest, racing to the ball a bit quicker than the dogs. Pushell. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that cylinder looks awfully big right now. Hayes. Oh, halfway through the rim and out. And the foul underneath against Chris Daniels. Here's Pichelle at the top of the key. Open jump shot. Not much pressure on the ball. Not a particularly good shooter, but he bangs that one home. Well, you said they were playing a passive man. Right now, they may have to extend that defense just a bit. Well, they're going to definitely have to get to Burdine, who's a very, very good three-point shooter. Murray State was 32% for the year as a team from downtown. Belies the stat early. They're three for three so far tonight. Tough pass corralled by Welchel. Jarvis Hayes on Burdine. Jarvis Hayes has some of the quickest feet I've seen all year in college basketball. Cuthbert Victor, four for four from downtown. It's a 16 to four lead. The racers have come out looking like thoroughbreds. Yes, oh, the back iron. Pichel, long rebound to Hayes. Count it and a foul. A big, big basket for Georgia. Both. Boy, they were ready to come out of their seats. Here's the alley oop, and Burdine misses the dunk. And Pachelle follows up with a missed three, and Georgia's off to the races. Pushing the ball ahead, right, taking the ball in the basket, getting fouled, and laying it in. Eddie, I know it's early, and I realize this game is going to be end to end. But Georgia was really in need of a five-point swing like that. Absolutely. Uh, Murray State playing with great confidence early, but there's a lot of possessions left to be played this game, particularly at the tempo. Again, we got Jarvis Hayes on Burdine. Jarvis Hayes is a 6'6 player with long arms. It's going to be difficult for Burdine to get good looks against the quickness of Jarvis Hayes. Oh, wow. Burdine again. He has three by himself from downtown. And that was over the contested arms of Jarvis Hayes. Ezra Williams, not there. Pulled down by Daniels. Quickly out to Rashard Wright. This guard really knows how to shoot it. Murray State, five for six from downtown. Burdine already has 14 points. Williams trying to get it to Thomas. Knocked away. Last touch by Georgia. Uh, the racers are saying Udden Udden from three early on.
Archbold. Tipped up and in. Give that one to Austin Andrews. Andrews pointing to the official score to say that was mine, <laughs> only he was pointing to the wrong sideline. We gave it to him. He's pointing at us. That's right. Nicholas with a three. Nice touch. Drew Nicholas comes in off the bench with a three. Price taking him. That's a backcourt pass. Baseliner. Yes. Good again by Austin Andrews. Might have missed something there, Jim. I think that ball was thrown front court to back court. Sure looked like it. There's where Baxter loves to be. No stopping that. And Clinton did the right thing, not fouling, because he was in bad position. Timeout called by Siena. Hanging with Maryland, 26-21, Terps. Boston College leads Texas by three. And if you look around this arena, I see plenty of Texas burnt orange, Bob. Plenty. They are pretty close to home right here as a six seed. I think they're only about 150 miles away from Austin. The home of the Longhorns. Now this arena sold out weeks ago with an anticipation of Oklahoma, Texas, even Texas Tech possibly being here. Well, the first two you mentioned are here. Lots of fans this afternoon for the Sooners. Williams, oh, boy, he takes a fall. Williams flying through the air. Freddie Williams, and he is up. A dangerous moment for the senior from Evans, Georgia. Williams was a former point guard and a defensive specialist. Nice defense here by Thomas creates this situation. And when TJ Ford came to town, what? Oh man, hit his head and his spine. But he's up. Boy, he's fortunate. And calmly sinks the free throw. Right here, not as much of a leaper as he used to be. Gets off balance while he's in the air. He has a very heavy brace on his left knee. And that knee surgically repaired. He tore it in an exhibition game. Tore it in an exhibition game earlier in the year and sat out 10 games. That is a heavy brace on his left knee. Not as quick as he used to be, but still a determined defender. Makes both free throws. Yeah, Freddie returned just after Christmas. We asked uh, Rick Barnes yesterday, what, what level would you put him at? He says about 80%. Easy bucket baseline Agbai just a little floater five points early five for Agbai five for Walls Texas went to a one two two three quarter court trap PC recognized it and scored easily Ivy shoots and fires it down uh, Texas is the kind of team that is takes pride in its defense here we see it again the one two two it's designed to get a trap at half court. Troy Bell talking to Sydney about the placement of where they should be. You want to attack this with a 2 1 2 lineup and get in the gaps? Is that over, overly technical? You're, you're a former coach. I mean, why not? Sometimes you have to speak like that. Well, the you know? collisions continue. <laughs> Ivy picks up his second, and he'll have to take a seat. Well, that is unfortunate right there. Ivy, one of their main scorers, averaging 11 a game. Troy Bell feeds act by loose ball, pop free. Nice hands by Williams. Texas on the run, leads it. With the flush. Brandon Mouton, the sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana. Boy, that gets that Texas crowd roaring. They're up by one. TJ Ford out of the game. Williams spearheading the D. Sydney on the wing. Sydney, very interesting character. Leads the team in rebounding. The best rebounding guard in the United States. 7.8 per game. Andrew Bryant checking in for Boston College. Misses on his first shot. Bryant is from Denison, Texas right here. Ten minutes from the arena. This will get people excited. Williams to Mouton. A perfectly timed execution of the lob. 
Ryan had a very good game against Villanova, made five threes in that game. Seldomly used player, only averaged about 10 or 11 minutes a game, but maybe inspiration being near his home. Contact with the body, whistled on Bryant. That will be his first. Number 34, Anthony Bryant, his first personal foul. Number two. Second team foul for Boston College. Williams will inbound. Just under 14 minutes left, opening half. Texas by one. Make that Texas by four. Wow. As the three ball goes down with ease. Sidmill has the green light. He's from the Netherlands. Sidmill Harris, a freshman at 6'4. Good range inside and out. Freddie Williams really working hard on Bell. Off the ball and on the ball. They wrap it inside. Picked back up by BC. Akbai working hard. Boy, Texas has really pushed the level of defense up a notch. James Thomas. Boddicker, nice feed inside. Thomas missed the layup. Loose ball baseline. Here comes Boston College. Sydney pushing. Collision. Two officials confer. And the Longhorns whistle for the foul. That's Boddicker. This is a piece of good officiating right here. It's questionable what the call is, so both officials rush to each other to confer. Watch them there in your screen. Right here, looks like a charge to me. It's not gonna be called that way, but both officials do a good job so that one doesn't call one thing and the other something else. The explanation for Coach Barnes, which he is not satisfied with, I'm sure. Not at all. Boddicker, the foul, the sophomore from Duncanville, Texas, is back on the bench. It's a pleasure to watch a good defensive player. Freddie Williams really is a good defensive player. Not only does he stick with his man tightly, preventing from getting the ball, but does off-ball defensive things as well. Sydney, tough shot, had it in and out. Rebound, Texas. Mouton battling hard for the board. Williams now has it, hands off to Sidmill Harris. Drives, got caught up in traffic, and a whistle. Well, don't miss any action. Get exclusive audio plus video highlights and detailed play-by-play -play from each game at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. Agby picks up the foul. It will be his first and the third team foul on Boston College. Harris makes the first. How close is Texas to this venue? 181 miles. Oklahoma also here, closer by 10 miles. And Texas, there's some controversy about this, being a sixth seed and getting a venue close to their home. Those things normally reserved for the one, two, and three seeds. Nice trap. Another defensive play by Freddie Williams. Al Skinner not happy about that. Doesn't normally show much emotions on the sideline was a great player for the University of Massachusetts. Another three is raining down. Mouton with five, and Texas opens up a nine-point lead at the 12.42 mark. Texas appears offensively, Craig, to be playing very loose. Not afraid to let threes go, not trying to be careful early in the game. Troy Bell needs to come out of his funk. 16-2 run for Texas. Agbai keeping BC close. Seven points. Walls has thrown down five. Texas has more weapons when they than earlier thought to have. I think what's happened with this team is they've gotten more and more experience, played the big tough 12, big 12 conference, very tough games, and they've developed. Tipped. Still alive underneath that basket. Credit plots for keeping the basketball alive. Deginal, the recipient of a loose ball, playing very well without TJ Ford in the game. Bell from long range. That's a frustration shot. The putback, Dorna Camp. His first bucket. And you know, interesting point from Al Skinner. Troy Bell simply to get out of the shooting slump. He says he has to concentrate, Bob, on the shot selection. Right. And right there, a poor choice. That was a poor choice. Very deep. Frustrated he hadn't taken a shot in a while. Oh. Williams, smooth. 
Texas really executing offensively, getting everything they want right now. Williams call, calling for a blow. He gets fatigued playing Bell so tightly. Look at his defensive stance, how low he gets to pressure Bell. Walls wants it. The left hander off the mark. They're shooting way out on the perimeter. And a whistle. And now some uh, jawing back and forth. Dorna camp going up against Mouton. And TJ Ford will check back in when we come back. Texas in control. We'll be right back. Looks like they're going to try and get a good one late. Big thing for you, Sailor, you want to make sure you rebound on this, this shot so you get one more, a little hammer in your hand. About a seven-second differential, game clock, shot clock. Here's Wade. Five on the shot clock. Harrison. Not there. And a chance. Plenty Barnes of time. For UCLA, seven seconds. Here's Walcott. Go to the goal. Go to the goal and give it inside. Yeah, Zurich. It's launched from outside, and Billy Knight ends the first half with a serious punctuation mark. As I said, go to the goal. <laughs> a step back, Jack, and that'll give you a pain. Use the bounce, they take away the dribble path, but follow through a little nylon. And Steve Lavin, who is as energized as his club, and let's go to Leslie. All right, Leslie, thank you. We have reached the end of the first half, and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball continues after this message and a word from your local station. On that play for Maryland, and had Siena been able to steal it away from him, they would have had an easy basket. Coming up right after your late local news, stay tuned for the Emmy Award winning Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, New England Patriots star Adam Vinatieri kicks footballs off the roof of the Ed Sullivan Theater to a surprise receiver. And Dave goes into the audience for Who Asked For It? Tonight on Dave. Tim Brando, Eddie Fogler, Charles Davis here in Chicago. Murray State with a nine point lead, a 14 seed of the Ohio Valley Conference against third seeded Georgia from the SEC. Bad shot by Walter. Rashard Wright running the show with Freddie Gibson, Daniels, Ezra Williams, and Jonas Hayes on the floor. Daniels gets the harm. The shot did not fall. And the foul goes against Roderick Thomas, freshman from Monroeville, Alabama. Role player that comes off the bench for Tavester Anderson. When either team scores or misses, Tim, you better get your tail back on defense. Both these teams will push the ball right back at you, trying to get the easy baskets. Jarvis Hayes comes back in. And Freddie Gibson takes a seat. Okay, he's going to accomplish great things in football in the future for Mark Rick at Georgia, particularly with the offense they have. It's nice to see multi-sport players, particularly with the uh, relationship in the past between football and basketball coaches. It's good to see more of them playing both sports. Well, I saw Last round of games this second day of the tournament. One game at halftime, the other three are in progress, and we'll take you there. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York for Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg. Our score at the half, UCLA leading Ole Miss 36-26. If you didn't go on a run at some point <laughs> in this first half, you didn't belong in this game. UCLA won a, went on a big one to get a big lead. Then Mississippi closed the gap. Loose UCLA closed the half with the run. There you see the leading scores. Three-point shooting really big for Mississippi because UCLA played primarily a zone defense and perimeter shots are available. And Mississippi made a few threes late to get back in it. Talking about making a few threes how about the racers of Murray State in the game in Chicago first round in the east the racers are leading Georgia 27 to 20 and they have been raining threes on the Bulldogs let's take you there live Tim Brando and Eddie Fogler James Singleton returns for Murray State. the racers of Murray State got out to that very fast start hitting six of their first seven from downtown since then they've cooled and the dogs of Georgia have cut into the lead it's down to five 
Just over nine minutes to play in what has been a, a really entertaining region. The pod factor certainly coming into play with a Midwest region upset. 12 seed over a five seed Creighton earlier today at the buzzer, Terrell Taylor. And then later, Bob Knight's team taken out by the 11 seeded Salukis. Well, there's Victor taking Daniels off the dribble on the perimeter. Perimeter. Daniels much better in the post defensively. Cannot guard Victor on the perimeter. V Victor just bounces it to the goal. Cutsburg Victor, a young man from the Virgin Islands. And a foul. Well, we talked about Jim Herrick. Hey, unlock the box for more success. The guy just knows how to get it done. Pepperdine taken out, you might recall, by Jim Valvano in that miracle run. UCLA, national champions in 95. Rhode Island to the Elite Eight. Had a six-point lead in the last minute, I recall, my old partner. Al McGuire and I had the opportunity to call that game in St. Louis. Arthur Lee made the big steal. Mark Matson, the mad dog, had a slam, and it turned into a three-point play. And the Cardinal of Mike Montgomery moved on. Stanford winning that game against Rhode Island. He had Catino Mobley, Tyson Wheeler, outstanding guards on that particular team. And took out an excellent Kansas team in the game before in the tournament. Out there, long rebound, Burdine. In the corner, he's trapped. Leads to a turnover. Nice play by Hayes to Williams. What presence by Jarvis Hayes. As he was going to pick up the loose ball, he looked up the court, so Williams sneaking out and pitched it ahead for the easy basket. Murray State's taking awfully tough threes, Tim. It's very difficult to continue to hit at the pace they were early, taking the shots they're taking. Antonio Henderson in the game now, number four in blue. Michelle operating at the point along with Burdine. And down inside, it's Singleton and Welchel for the Racers. Singleton with the ball fake. Rejected but fouled. Looked like a lot of leather there for Daniels, but he's whistled for the foul his first. Here's Burdine being trapped on the sideline. It's almost like a triple team when you can get somebody at the sideline. Nice hands, they deflect. And here's the pitch ahead to Williams for the easy hoop. Georgia also now starting to put more pressure on the perimeter. Very conscious of the threes. Singleton, clearly the best newcomer in the Ohio Valley Conference. Young man at 13 double-doubles. Second team Ohio Valley Conference. So it's a five-point game. The Racers of Murray State, seven and a half to play in the first half. In Dallas, first round game in the Midwest, the Texas Longhorns have gone on a tear and have bolted ahead of the Boston College Eagles. Let's take you live to Dallas and join Craig Bowler, Jack, and Bob Wenzel. The inside play of Texas Craig has been remarkable in this game, both offensive boards and passing it inside. Thomas and Erskine really doing a great job. The big people for Boston College not matching their efforts. Texas has gotten nine points off the bench from Harrison Williams. And another miss by Boston College. Longhorns. Troy Bell off balance on that one. Thomas posting up. Agby working hard. But Thomas much more athletic. Harris on the wing. Under seven and a half to go. Mouton swings it around. Williams backs in, backs out. He took a hard fall just a few minutes ago, but is shaking off the ill effects. Foul on Agby inside. He is having a difficult time. The Longhorns run is now 24 to 6. They lead at 32 17 on the Eagles. In Washington at the MCI Center, the top seed in the East, the Terps 41 29 over Siena. Let's take you there, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Maryland, the white uniforms. The one seed trying to shake off the Siena Saints. 41 29, Maryland. Led by Juan Dixon's 14. And because Maryland has not made this game spectacular, the crowd is still down a little bit. They're expecting their club to come in here and blow out a 16. 17 now on the night for Dixon. But I kind of like this Siena club. They're hanging right in there. And had to win five games in a row to find themselves in a position to be even in this tournament. All were one and done games. Price throws it out of bounds. Sienna, the most points the Saints had allowed in the first half of the game this year was 42. 
And Maryland's already broken past that. Well, for the first time, I saw a little frustration on the face of the Siena players. One thing they cannot do is lose focus here. This game will get away from them in a hurry. The explosive nature of this Maryland team. Dixon feeds Holden. Example right there. And the, la and the last thing, if you're Coach Lanier, you want is this crowd to get into this game. Winner of this game moves on to face Wisconsin, and right now Maryland looking good at 46-29, under four minutes to play in the first half. We thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. We'll send you back to Pittsburgh for the second half of Ole Miss and UCLA in just a moment. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Point guard at 6-6. The versatility that Hayes brings to the table for Jim Harrick, whether it be on the offensive end or the defensive end. He's guarding Pichel. Second foul on Singleton as he gets whistled for the push. And to Mr. Anderson up to discuss it. <laughs> he doesn't buy in. Talking with William Bush. The younger of the three For officials. Jonas, Jonas Hayes, Tivester Juan, Anderson, known affectionately as T. The T man, well known in the circles and the back roads of recruiting. <laughs> Tim, some people thought Jonas Hayes was just a throw in when they got Jarvis at Georgia. He has developed into a very solid basketball player for Jim Harris Bulldogs. They played at Frederick Douglass High School, but the big key is they transferred from Western Carolina. Jarvis Hayes. Well, what a, what a great recruiting job by Herrick to keep Hayes under the radar for a full year. I can't believe it. Jim should be a member of the CIA to be able to get away with that. He was the first freshman to lead the Southern Conference in scoring in 40 years in Cullowee, North Carolina. Western Carolina, the Catamounts, that town is basically a P.O. box for the school. It's a very small town in the hills of North Carolina. Verdine, stripped by Wright. Excellent defensive play. Daniels to Hayes. Yes, and a foul. The Bulldogs take the lead. Their first of the night. Mark it down with 6.24 left. They get their first lead of the game. And his crib, here's Chris Daniels being a point guard in the middle of the break at 6-7. Nice bounce pass to the streaking Jarvis Hayes for the basket. One shot. Ducks under the foul, gets hit on the arm, but still has the, the ability to complete. With more on Jarvis Hayes is Charles Davis. Charles? Guys, what happened at Western Carolina for the Hayes brothers after that great year by Jarvis was the Western Carolina staff was not retained. So their father picked up the phone and called Jim Herrick. James, James, uh, excuse me, James uh, Hayes, he picked up the phone and called and said, hey, I want both my boys to go together. Would you mind taking them? Obviously, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, I'd say so. Singleton, not there. Daniels tries to stay, save it, but it's out of bounds to Murray State. The Bulldogs of Georgia, the number three seed, finally gets a lead for the first time in this half, just some 20 seconds ago, against uh, Murray State. Came out hitting six for seven from three-point range, and they opened up a 14-point lead at one point in this half. But, uh, the pace of the game, very comfortable for Georgia. They've only hit one three-pointer, and yet they've uh, gone on this huge run to get... <laughs> Again, really spreading it out. Randall doing a nice job, very active down in low tonight. Here he is again. Into oh. Clinton. Wasn't so active on that one. Good job by Clinton filling in through the post. Some cheers for Clinton here in Washington tonight. Very important three minutes right now. And there is Dixon, who's been on fire. He's going to have a 20 point first half, Jim. And he's right on it. He's got 20. He has 20 right. And uh, very quiet. Oh, wow. He steps. Steps. Yeah. Okay. Randall down again. I, I think Randall's doing a fine job in this first half. He's got his shirt hanging out and being told by the referee to get it back in, but a solid first half. He's kind of smiling. Young man from Allegheny Community College, same place that provided Steve Francis to the University of Maryland. There's Dixon. Does he have another one? Slips off, slips off the rim. Well, he tried to go ahead and draw the 
the foul for three, which would be like almost giving him three with a 90% free throw shooting percentage. Good overplaying by Mouton. Really become a solid all around player. Holden clears underneath. Sneesick had a good look. Mouton jumper outside. And Sneesick pulls down the rebound. Mouton not having a good solid outing right here. Had a real good game against Florida State in the first round of the ACC tournament. 18.7 rebounds. He was very solid in that one. Clinton with a three. Clinton has been an outstanding player here in the first half of Siena. His second three. We just saw him slide into the post before. And Maryland, just when they look like they're going to pull it into a 20 point type game, Siena comes back with some solid play. Clinton has 10 points for the Saints. Archbold on Dixon in the inside. And who is that going to be against? It's going to be against Dixon, who was fighting for position. Give Archbold a lot of credit. He stayed right with them and never retaliated. Normally, the officials in that particular case, Jim, will see the second push. So Archbold really did a smart thing there. He didn't get intimidated at all by Dixon's shoving and pushing, and it puts Dixon on the bench. Archbold stays out there. Hard to press this team with tall, rangy players keeping their dribble alive. Three is long, and Nicholas comes out for the Terribles. Lake wants to make a play. This guy can shoot it. Holden with a three, dips down and out. Nice block out. Archbold, chance to drive it down the floor. Block called on Blake. Gary Williams didn't like this one. Watch Blake's feet. Are the feet moving? Did he establish a defensive position before contact? The answer is no. Never got his right foot down. Now, you can be moving if you ever initially establish a defensive position, but Blake never had one. Sixth team foul. That was one of those Hank Nichols training films. Charge block calls, as we see in the NCAA seminars, Jim. Hank Nichols, the head of the NCAA officiate officials. And Calvin McCall in for Maryland, number five. Former football player. And they say McCall reached in. This will be a one and one. Gary Williams does not want to see Sienna on the foul line here in this half. He's wanting to spread this lead open. He's up 16. But Archbold goes to the line. And just as we talk about Dixon being a good free throw shooter, Archbold shoots at 82 percent. Gary Williams not happy at all in regard to the execution here at the end of the first half. Again, averaging 20 points a game, Archbold from Brooklyn, New York. The senior and the first of Paul Hewitt's recruiting class. Turned on to the game by his brother Kenneth, who played uh, college basketball at Grand Canyon College. Last year he was all conference second team. Obviously, this year as the number one scorer in the conference, his first team, and then the MVP of their postseason tournament. A solid year. Young man that played at Paul Robeson High School. 50-36, final minute of the first half. Collins in the backcourt with Nicholas. Holden's pass knocked away. Cabo almost came up with it. 2-3 zone right now. Lanier wants his team to stay back. Ten on the shot clock. Nicholas Floater tipped around. Holden with the oh, pass. Oh, nice touch. That was quite a play inside. Andre Collins defending Karangwa with 11 seconds. Rondo would like to play against a smaller defender. Let's see what he does with it. Great pass. Miller hacked on the way up by Holden. Boy, that pass was perfect. We'll see Miller on the inside. Is this all ball or not? No, no, no. No, not at all. No, Gary Williams is saying it wasn't a foul. I don't know what Gary was looking at, but without question. <laughs> it, 
it was more than a foul. Miller got hammered. 4.5 seconds to go in the half. Two shots for Justin Miller. Sophomore from Lakewood, New York. Miller, two really good games against both Niagara in the championship, the conference tournament, and then uh, a solid outing against Alcorn State as well. Tommy Mitchell and Mark Price come in for the final seconds of the half for Siena. 4.5 seconds. You'd like to get this pass up to half court. You've got Nicholas, pretty good floater. You've got Holden who can step out and shoot the three. Jerry Williams not going with any starters out here. He's got Nicholas, uh, he's got Dixon sitting on that bench, Baxter, Wilcox. He doesn't have a starter on the floor. Maryland takes a brief time out here, set up one last shot. He's determined to take that shot on his own and did. Agby trying to encourage his teammates to get on the boards a little bit. The zone that they are employing right now is allowing Texas to get to the basket on the offensive rebound end. Maybe some man to man might be better suited. So far, the guards nothing. As six points combined, Texas on a 19 to 6 run over the last 8 10. Makes it a three point play, seven for Troy Bell. 41 22 Texas there was a time during the season Craig where when why give somebody an opportunity to scout you get the ball in bounds and just try to take you can get as good a shot with no play as they could with that setup not that they only have one way to score with four seconds to go let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein Juan Dixon with 20 leading the Terps 52 38 Maryland at halftime send you back to New York get some live look-ins with Greg and Clark in just a moment His lead of five. played a couple years at North Texas around and out rebound to Sydney Deginald is the cousin of a former very good Texas player named Chris Clack had a terrific career for the Longhorns look at Williams up on Bell just hounding Bell Wants to res reset the offense with 18 on the shot clock. Troy wants a screen. Ross provides. Bell, wide open shot. Around and out. Tried to follow and tipped away. But even though he came off a screen on that particular play, did not land and get a balanced shot. Texas came up. Good help off the screen. Bob, let me ask you another coaching question. With this type of lead for Texas and Boston College, who can't score, by the way, in this final 2-10. What has to happen to at least have some hope at halftime? Well, they got to D up a little bit in the paint area, like right there, you know. One, and a timeout, Georgia. One thirteen remaining in a very entertaining finale here in Chicago. Body. Here we got a screen for him right here. Off to Bell. Williams fights through. Williams, one of the better defenders I've seen. Well, that knee brace has not slowing him down a bit tonight. Walls up high, feeds Sydney. Had a look. Now it goes down low. Ross rejected from behind. Follows it up and in. Even that is a struggle. You know, they get it in there, get a layup. It's blocked, and they have to get a good second effort by Ross to get two points. So Boston College struggling to score. Texas scoring at will. One twenty-five to go before the break. Williams up top. I like this with Ford and Williams in the game at the same time. Ford dribble drives. Boy, look at the handoff. You thought he was going to the hole. Indiana and Maryland will show you the final action taking place on this Friday night in the tournament. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nation.